very first thing before we even get started, we want to start our tea bag soaking. So you should have water. You only need about half a cup. I've got it set in here. You don't need that much. You need enough to cover the tea bag and make sure there's some water in there. And then I just need you to open up your tea bag or whatever it is, and I need you to go ahead and set it in your water. So um, I'm going to set it in there, make sure I get it all covered in my water, almost like we're about to have a cup of tea, and we want to make sure, make sure it gets nice and wet. And um, we're going to let it soak in our water because we're going to use it at the end of class. So we just want to make sure it's soaking in there well. So everyone get your tea bag ready, and then we're going to start talking about Egret Degas. So, so I've got mine all in there. And it doesn't matter what kind of tea. Maybe you have a, like a nice little flavored tea, so it'll smell good. And then you need to have some watercolor, some kind of heavy paper. If you don't, just try it with what you have. Just We're going to have to be a little delicate with it. Um, and then your pencils. And then something to add white. So pastels or chalk was what I recommended because this is a drawing. And that's that would be appropriate for a drawing. But you use what you have at home, and we're going to accomplish that. So we're going to talk about Edgar Degas today. Um, you're going to see some of his drawings right behind me. I'm going to hold one up a little bit closer so you can see it, because there's a lot of detail. Um, there's a lot of detail in there. And what I want you to look at is how many lines there are. You see, um, if you've heard me talk before, I like to see the map of where you've drawn because it helps me know what you're thinking. And so we get to know what Edgar Degas is thinking, where he thought the foot might go first, where it might go over there. So this is really a great picture to study how an artist thinks. Now, you may know Degas by many of his ballet paintings, lots of ballerinas, beautiful pieces. But he also loved horses and jockeys. And the way those went together is he liked to draw things that had this beautiful performance. And he would do behind the scenes. So the ballet, the dancers come out, they dance along, but behind the stage, what's going on beforehand? Those quiet moments that are before or after the actual event. It was the same with his jockeys. He didn't necessarily need to capture the race. He wanted to capture that before or that after, the moment where the jockey might be just walking his horse and talking along. And he wanted to capture those. Now, he is living with the rest in the time of the rest of the Impressionists. We've talked about Impressionism. And there, you'll hear me mention Neo-Impressionism, impressionism, Post-Impressionism. Just keep Impressionism in your mind. And that's like a little over 100 years ago. And there are lots of artists. And most of it's con concentrated in France. So Degas is French. He's from France. He's actually doubly French because his mother is French Creole from New Orleans. So he has a little bit of U.S. French Creole, and then he has France. So it's kind of neat to know that we're already talking about the United States at this point. He even came to the United States and painted down in New Orleans. So shout out to New Orleans. And so this is our French artist who has some American roots too. But the neat thing about him is he wanted to be this classic history painter. He just wanted to paint history. And so he really wanted to study how things looked. The interesting thing is he studied older artists, kind of like we study older artists. And I want to read this quote because I think this is beautiful. An older artist that he studied, that is Jean-Dominic Ingras, um, and I might have messed up my French right there, but it's spelled I-N-G-R-E-S is his last name, told Degas this when he was a young artist in art school. And this stuck. Degas repeated this. He's talked about this. This stuck with him. So I want this to stick with you today because I think it really sums up becoming an artist. And he said, and I'm going to read from this quote, draw lines, young man, and still more lines both from life and from memory, and you will become a good artist. So today, we're going to draw some lines. We're going to go on that path of becoming a good artist. These 
are very gestural. We've talked about that. So what we're going to do is I am going to draw up here, and this is going to represent your paper. You are going to be actually drawing onto your watercolor paper, and we're going to have those lines to be seen like we can see Degas. We've talked about drawing things from shapes because that's a great way to break them down because this is still shapes, but we've got so much movement. I'm going to introduce grid drawing. Some of you may have done this uh, at different times in different art classes, but this is a concept of breaking down a full drawing instead of an image into shapes and concentrating on smaller areas so you can build it together. So we're going to break your paper down into what we're going to call grids. Um, I'm not worried about a ruler because we don't have a big picture. Normally you would take a ruler and do this. So we're just going to freehand our lines because most of our concentration of our drawing is in the middle. So with your pencil, I want you to mark these and try and keep them as light as you can, but do the best wherever you are. And I want you on your paper to mark a line down the middle. Just make it pretty much as straight as you can. We're still going to mark our area out. Now you can't see that, so I'm going to darken it with a marker. Do not darken your line. I'm just doing it so I can show you at home. So I'm going to darken that line. We're going to make a grid here. So we're basically right in the middle. We divided our paper into two halves. Then we're going to divide each half into another half. So we're going to draw a line down here right here. So right, again, I have my paper in landscape mode. Remember when we turn it horizontal? I've got it this way. So I'm going to divide this into half, about right there. We're not measuring this out, so it's okay if it's not quite right, um, if this is a little bit bigger, because most of our drawing is concentrated in the middle. I do just kind of want to introduce this concept with you. Um, so we've got a line down the middle, which made two halves, and then we divided those halves into halves. So now we have four sections going across. We're going to do the same way going the other direction of our paper. So let's draw a line down the middle. Okay, about down the middle. And then we're going to divide this into two and this into two. So we're going to come right between those and draw a line down the middle right here. And can you see we have made a grid of our paper? Now, when I'm drawing just single subjects, I do like to break those down into shapes. When I'm drawing a full scene, this is an excellent way for a beginner student to understand where relationships are. So, um, oh, there's a question online about the tea bag, I think. Do you need the hot water? Do you need hot water? So normally, if I was antique, oh, I just told you what we're going to do with the tea bag. But if I was antiquing paper, I would boil the tea. But today, we're going to be scrubbing the paper with it. So warm water is ideal, but knowing that everyone's preparing differently for these um, lessons, and knowing that you might just turn this on, I went ahead and just set a cup of water. So mine was room temperature when I put it in. So you'll be fine no matter what. So everyone should have, so now if you want to count your, your, your grid, we're going to make sure we have four across, one, two, three, four, and four down. So we have 16 squares. Now, if I broke this down, which I'll do kind of the same thing right here. We're going to draw a line down the middle. Can you see that, Talia, on the camera? Okay. So we're going to know where we are in our grid, and then a line down the middle here. It's going to make a, oops, I went a little wonky there. It's going to make it very specific. Now, if anybody wonders what the name of this piece is, piece is it's two, but two is in French, it's two, but it's two jockeys. Pretty easy to remember. So, and we're going to draw a line across, right across there, right across there. And now, hopefully, you can see what we're doing. We're going to transfer these images onto here. Are you ready for this? So let's grab our pencils. 
You can do this. This is a great exercise to do with a, an image from a magazine or a greeting card or something if you're just practicing. So we're going to break it down. Notice most of our drawing is in this middle section. So most of your drawing is going to fall in here. So we're going to start right up by his cap. If I look in this square, I see this top part of his cap and this. So let's put that in there, right there. I'll put his cap right in there. Just that top part and a little line there. Can they see my pencil or do I need to darken that? Maybe with charcoal or the, so here, we'll go. So you have basically that shape right there. So we're up in this, if we came to the top, we're in the second quadrant. We're going to get our, all our shapes going across the top here. So we don't have anything in this one, so we just skipped it. We've got that right there. Now we're going to come along and do just, he just has a little bit of his neck, the rest of the hat basically, a little bit of his neck and some of his back right there, kind of a line. So can you see that? We've got that shape right there. So we don't have much in that, in that quadrant right there. We just have that. So you're looking at where that is. Can they see that on camera pretty well? Do we need to come closer? So now we're going to go over here. There's a little bit more detail. Do you see where we are? We've got a face. If you just need to put an oval in for a shape, um, you can do that. So we're going to put this quadrant in. We're just going to put an oval in so we don't have to worry too much about his face if you want to put his nose in. That's his hat right here, and I'm simplifying a little bit so we can get that in, and then we've got his shoulders coming down right there. Can you see how we're starting to develop the picture? And I don't ever think anyone is too young or too old for this technique. I know, I learned this early on in classes. Um, in some of my earlier drawing classes in college, in some of my earlier drawing classes in high school, and even did it as an elementary student. So when I was doing some art lessons, I know professional artists in their 80s that still use this to do large scale murals. So this is a technique that is tried and true. And even we found out Degas did use this method some too when he was trying to learn his history paintings. So this is not, this is an excellent tool to put in your art toolbox and think, I need to make a drawing. I know I can make a grid. So we've covered our first row, nothing in our first square. We've got a hat and we've got the back and then we've got the head and I'm simplifying it a little bit right there. Now we're going to come along. We're going to get a little more detail. So we don't have too much in there. I'm not that worried about that line. That's part of the horse. I'm more worried about my jockey today. So we're going to come over to that square. So right there, we have the rest of his hat. We're going to have a little bit of his face. You can just put an oval if you want to. His face is looking down. So we're continuing that line. We're going to come in a little bit. We've got his arm coming all the way out. His sleeve is a little wrinkly. I like that. A lot of movement in lines. And then a little stroke for the hand. A little stroke for the hand right there. So we've got that sleeve. This is a great one for adults to do. It looks like you can see where he was thinking about changing his mind. So we're going to put a little bit of line in there because it gets a little bit, you're not quite sure what's going on. So I'm just going to add some extra lines and we can test that. So we've got the rest of his face, we've got his arm, and we're going to move over to this square right here. Then we come down with his back right here. His waistline comes in right here, and then we've got his seam with his shoulder coming down right there. We're going to come up. So 
So this is where you kind of have some of the lines you're not, because he has so many lines on his drawing, which is what I love. I love it when a student turns this in and they have all these lines and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I can see your brain where you were moving the hand up and down and up and down. And that's why I love to show you master artists, artists that were important while they were living and important now. And this is what they did. I have so many students, and this is young and old. It does not matter your age. I teach a lot of adult classes that come in and go, oh, I messed up. They, God didn't think that. He was thinking, oh, I'm going to change my design, and I'm going to make my mark so I understand what I'm doing. So I want you to know that when you look at your paintings. And if somebody says something to you about it, you go, I'm just doing a day off. So now we're going to continue along, and we're going to come over to our last square. So we've, we're moving all the way across, and then you're halfway through the drawing. So we've got our arm here. We can add his stripes in if we want to. Let's go ahead and add some of those stripes in. I like those stripes on there. Can you see? It's got a stripe going down here. Okay, and then we're going to come over here, and his shirt continues down here. He's got an arm in the back of his shirt right there. So right there, we've got an arm coming right there. There's his shirt as it continues coming across. So can you see what's happening as we break that down? So we've got his face up here when we're looking I can even put this one right next to it so you can see. So we've got his face. I'll add a little bit of a doze. You don't have to. We've got that in there. We've got his head that comes down. We came down with his shirt right here. He's got his squiggly lines and a little bit of where his pants and then he's sitting on a horse. So we'll get that on our next row. How are your drawings coming along? Are you seeing how this works? This is a great, this is a great way to understand drawings. And this is an, a wonderful piece to work from because really we're looking at the lines and we're understanding how this came together. So let me come back over here and let's go with our next row. This is what we're going to be working with. So. I love this, to use this for a drawing, because we've got whole squares we don't have to put anything in. Isn't that great? So we know this whole first row is pretty much clear. So we're going to come over and we're going to work on these, and then we get to have some clear ones done. And you're going to have a Degas drawing. So let's put his leg in right here. So we've got that legs coming down right across there. It comes in and then comes back down right there. It's coming in. There we go. And it looks like I've got a little bit of saddle right there that's coming around. And I see just a little bit of the horse. So that way we'll know. And then I've got the rest of the hand right there. Just a few lines. So, and then we've got a continuation of that line. So when we break this down, there's not as much going on here. We've got the leg that comes down here. We've got a little bit of the saddle right here, and then it looks like you just get a hint of the horse going on. Coming up here from where that arm is. So we've got that. So let's go over. We're going to get where he's sitting down, and we're basically connecting these two like this right here. So we're going to come down and connect those. We also have a little bit of more saddle information right there and right here. Look at that. So we get that information and a little bit of the line of the horse coming along here. And that line's just going to continue on off over here, and we're going to see that. So let me go over where we are so everyone can get caught up. Um, let me continue this line out. And let's go over how we got to where all this is. 
So we start out with our grid and keep drawing if you don't need this review. If you do, just double check where you were and we're gonna make sure we get, have all those details in there. So I'm gonna hold this one up a little bit closer for you so you can see this right next to it. We start off at the top, we've got the hat in here, right here. Then we've got a little bit of the neck right there. Can they see this, tell you where it is? So we've got the neck coming down right here and then we came across and we've got the head. You see how we're in the quadrants and we're using that information. So we're down here, we've got the head and the shoulders. Then we're gonna come across I'm going to see if I can clip this down a little bit more even with where this is. That might be a little bit better. Let's see. There. Okay. So now you can see it a little bit more in line right there. So we have a blank square pretty much right there. Then we're going to come over and we've got the face. Got a little nose that comes out. You can just put a round circle if you need to. Got his cap coming across, the end of his cap. We've got his arm coming right there, right there. See as we come out, the other part of his arm. We've got his hand, just that stroke of his hand right there. It's kind of nice, it's just a gesture, a stroke right there. So we've got his sleeve. And then we've got some information that gets a little fuzzy on us. So this is where you can improvise. You can put a little bit. It looks as though he thought the hand might go up or down or change. So I put in a few lines here to represent that. And then we get ready to come over to the main body. So here we have his shoulder and his arm that comes down. We've got that. See how that comes down. We've got his back that comes down like that. And the top of his pants that come along here. A little bit of a line right there from the crease of his leg. And a few stripes on him. So then we pretty much start to build our jockey right there. So we've got a lot of that information. Then we come over here and we're gonna put in that information. Now, do you see how gestural? Gestural means very fast, very capturing the essence. We did it when we did the Giacometti sculptures. We did quick gesture drawings with the stick figures. When you're drawing gesturally, you're doing it very fast, capturing what's going on. So, we've just got the little arms and the sleeve. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna put the shirt coming around and then his pants, and we're almost done with jockey number two. We're gonna come back to jockey number one, nothing in the first square. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna get his leg that comes in there, a little bit of saddle information. Looks like we've got a line of the horse, a few drawings to the hands, and we've got some more saddle right here. We're gonna put that in there, and some saddle seat right there. Oh, and we've got another, some more lines that just come down, so we're just gonna add those. And then this looks like the back of the horse is just gonna carry across, and we're gonna go, and we're gonna finish, pretty much, our three grids. How are y'all doing? Does this seem like you've got this, or does it seem more difficult than drawing with the shapes? Every time your head has to surround itself with new information on how to do something, it's working extra time. So this gets you going in that way. So let's go down. We're almost done. Literally, we only have about one square that has information, and we've got some Dega jockeys. So what I want you to do is I want you to, we could put his signature in there. There it is right there, Dega. Um, and we're gonna come in and you see how gestural this information is. So we're just gonna, looks like his, he comes down and has a boot right here. We're gonna get that in there and we've got a little bit of a boot. It's just very simple as though it's in the stirrup and it looks like he's got a line for the stirrup and a line that comes down from there. And that's pretty much 
I think we've got a jockey, guys. That's our dead god drawing. So you have just now, using the grid, come up and figured out all these different things. Now there's a few other little gestural lines that are in there that are fine, which means if you want to add any gestures, if you want to continue on and add the horse, that's fine. If you want to add some detail down here. As long as you understand the purpose of the grid drawing. Oops, I forgot. Look, we've got a little detail right there. Let's get that. We'll finish him off right there. So here we've got jockey one, and we've got jockey two. And this is really a great example of understanding how grid drawing works. You can use this for very, very elaborate pieces, but it's great to start out with something pretty simple. And I'm not saying Degas drawing is simple. I'm saying just that we don't have as many grids to fill in because this is a beautiful complex drawing. I just want to repeat again what his mentor Angra said. I want to repeat this quote because I really want this to stick with you today. It says, draw lines, young man, and I can say young woman, and still more lines. Draw your lines, both from life and from memory, and then you will become a good artist. So what we want to do is this is a drawing. It is not a painting. So in drawings, you would, when you have a pastel, and you use pastels, which Degas often worked in pastels, um, it would be considered a drawing, not a painting. So we're going to get to a little bit of fun on our piece now. Um, I'm going to come down here. I do not have the drawing on here. Um, so let me quickly do, let me draw it on here while Talia is coming down to the table. I do on there. I'm going to draw it real quickly for y'all. So, but at least enough to give you an example. Let me get that on here for y'all. Some gestural strokes. So, okay, we can go from here. So let's look at, um, so now I have some drawing. Can they see that pencil drawing or do I need to go over that? So now we're going to take our tea bag, which we have soaking, and we're gonna rinse out our water best we can. Okay, and we're gonna start painting our watercolor paper. We're going to not paint where the white is. So I want to turn this around and I want to show you what um, no. So I want to show you right here and tell me what you can see, Talia. Okay, both the pictures. So we're gonna paint anywhere there's not white. So we don't want to paint his face. So we're gonna paint with that tea bag. And I am just I have it in my hand. I guess I could take off my Lipton decaffeinated tag right there, but I'm going to put it in my hand. Um, and I'm going to paint all around it. And I am just using the bag. And I'm going to come in here. Anywhere it is on here. And sometimes it helps. I might have to wet my bag again. So if I wet it, I'm going to just dip it back in my little bit of water and squeeze it out. And I'm just going to paint again. Painting my paper with a tea bag. I love it. What do you think Degas would think? He would think that was awesome. Okay. Now, this will dry pretty quickly. And uh, we're going to add a little bit more because we're going to open up our tea bag. So when you when you're all done filling in your paper, don't set your tea bag back in the water. Just set it off to the side. So I'm going to set it right there. And this is when you can come back in with your pencil. And I have two different things. So 
There are several types of pastels. I didn't specify. This is one of my kits of soft pastels. Um, it's beautiful, isn't it? Like sometimes I hate to use these because this is one of my prettiest sets. Um, and then you can also have what is called oil pastels. So you'll see a lot of different things or hard pastels. Soft pastels are very similar to chalk. So I also brought in just basic white chalk. Um, so you can use either one depending on what you have. So to be just like y'all, I'm going to do this. So I am going to actually come in and I'm going to emphasize the white of my paper. I'm filling in that white and then I'm going to come back in with my graphite. Anywhere I see that it's dark. Now notice I turned it to that side grip. Can you see my grip, T? I turned it to the side. I'm not holding it like a pencil anymore. I turned it to the side. So watch what happens as I work my chalk into the graphite. Can you see it move? This should work with your pastels. It should work with your oil pastels, but they water will... Pastels? Um, uh, water pastels. There aren't really water pastels. Um, there are the there are oil pastels are water resistant, and then all other like soft pastels, they are not waxy. They're very very chalky, um, and they're beautiful. It's essentially like pigment in a stick. I'll pull one out right here. So, can you see how I can just both the soft pastel how that just comes off just like that. But so here's the soft pastel. It has a little tint to it. Um, so when I come in and then I work actually my pencil into, I can get this, so I'm going to put that in there. You're going to start finding this really beautiful movement. See how I can get that to move? Now, what happens is you do get a little bit of this, so I'm going to blow on it and get that away. So let's come up to his shirt and I cover that surface with my chalk. I'm just using plain white chalk here, but you can use your pastel. And then I'm, I should, if I had my drawing up there, I'm going to put my lines in. Look at this. And I can shade in. I can shade that chalk and make those move just like his. See how it starts blurring and moving that with that? And come along underneath. Anywhere I want to put that on the side. Knowing how to hold your pencil this way is the way you get the most graphite off the edge. And this is just a plain number two. This is not a, a drawing pencil. I try to use basic tools when I'm working with y'all so that you can see what it should look like at home if you're using the same tools. Um, so see how we can make that move around? We're gonna, I'm going to come up to his face. I notice he has a lot of shadow up here. I just work that chalk. The nice thing about the pastels is you can, and the chalk, you can draw right on your paper, and then you can draw right on top of the chalk. You'll notice it'll make that paper nice and soft. I can color all that in. How are they, do we have any, this is, this is where I should get a lot of questions. Y'all have questions about this? Because this is kind of crazy. Like now you're using chalk and tea and all those fun things. So let the, the girls will let me know if you have any questions. So we come on in. I'm just getting that. The more chalk I add, the more I can smear it and make it move around. Now, I didn't put my tea here because if it was wet, if your paper's wet, it won't move around in the same way. We need dry paper for this. So we wanted that tea for that contrast of this. And we're going to come back in. Let's put his leg in here. And you can continue with this. I have chalk all over mine now, so it's just letting me get darker and darker with that. How do you tell if your pastel is hard or soft? So, if it will do this, it's soft. If it's hard, it will do this. If you draw with it on the paper, and you try to put your water on top of it and it completely resists it, it will be oil. So, but you can feel, um, uh, a hard pastel feels more the consistency 
of a crayon and a soft pastel will feel more the consistency of chalk. Now, in, they're usually labeled, when you have a soft pastel, you know, because they're all over your hands. If I show you, I mean, just from picking this up, you see how soft that is? Mm -hmm. You can see how that is. You'll know if you have a soft pastel, but you can use a hard pastel with this too, so. Okay, guys, how's everyone doing? I'm going to come along here. Let's darken this up. I picked up my other pastel that has a little bit of pink in it. Okay. So this is the idea, and you can continue to play with this. I'll come over and do his face over here. Add in a little bit, and I'm just using white chalk. And to tell you the truth, if you want to try this, if you didn't, I used white because that was close to the color scheme, but if you want to try this technique with other things you have, that is fine. And you can continue to play around with this. Now, one because we might want to make our paper darker, this would be something when you don't want to work on this anymore. When you're done with your drawing, I'm going to show you this. So you can continue working with your chalk and your drawing. i show you this. I'm going to open up my tea bag right here. And can you see the tea inside? I'm actually going to grind this in. I don't want it where I'm drawing, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to see how much darker the paper gets when I do that. I'm going to grind that around into my piece. And I'm going to make it darker. I really want it to be darker right around that jockey. You see how it gets darker and darker? And then this should completely dry. Your paper should probably still be a little wet from where you put, first put the tea on it. You can do this around anywhere you want the paper to be darker. So you don't have to do it all over. You can just work on it in those spaces where I'm getting, and it makes a nice mess, which I always love. So see how much darker it gets. You can also do this with um, coffee. It's just coffee doesn't always usually come in these nice little tea bags, which help you to paint your paper. So what you do is you would just let this set on your paper, and then when it's completely dry, you can brush all of it off, but can you see how much darker it gets in those areas? So that way, when you're all done with your drawing and you come back up, you can come back in. If you want to darken it up, and you can just take those pieces of tea, the little tea leaves, out of the bag. I've even got it open. I can grind it in, and I can darken up. Why would I want to darken my paper? What I want to do is anytime I want that white to pop, I would darken the areas around it so it really pops out. So you can continue working on your drawing, and then when you get to where you really like it, you can pull up and add that dark tea. So I'll have Talia come on up. And we'll get ready. And so I hope... That you, so you just continue working on your drawing while I'm talking, and I'm going to close out the lesson. But I hope you have had fun with Degas today, and really understanding a new way of drawing. If you haven't done grid drawing, I hope that this opened your eyes to a new way of how, we, how to break down the lines and the shapes and put them in a new fashion. I also hope that even if you have had grid drawing, this might have maybe cemented it or made it a little clearer or just reminded you about how it worked so that you might think about doing it today. I um, also hope that you like painting with different things. Sometimes just out of the box picking up a tea bag and thinking that you can antique your paper and make it darker. Ways to do that. Learning how you can take ordinary chalk and mix it with your graphite and get those results, um, which you can do with soft pastels as well. This is a fun artist. He really, really spent his entire life trying to be a better artist. And that's what I hope to do, and I hope to make all of y'all better artists, too. I hope you've enjoyed this.